Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin, and today we're going to be playing more Disco Elysium. First of all, <laughs> he's hiding back there. He is hiding back there. I swear to God, I didn't leave him out. I keep putting him in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. I had him over here and he was too high and now I put him over here without thinking about it. And now you can't see him at all. <laughs> you know what? I'm just, I'm too lazy to change it right now. I'm sorry. It'll be fixed in the next video. I'll have to put him down here just lower. But I was trying to think like, you know, I don't, I don't know. Also, second thing, I have bangs. I have bangs now. Yeah, I look a lot older, don't I? I mean, you guys already saw my bangs in the new setup video, but, um, first episode with bangs, I guess. The last few episodes were just a hot mess with the audio, I'm so sorry. I swear this mic is actually really, really good. I just, I was speaking in the wrong part of it. It's all my fault. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into the recap because we have quite a few things to talk about. We did quite a few things last episode. Guys, I'm obsessed with this game, okay? I'm seriously, I'm just fully in it. I need to keep playing it or else I'll lose my mind. In the last episode, it's day two. It was the beginning of day two, so we were able to explore around a lot because a lot of things changed. First of all, the union workers showed up in Whirling and Rags and they were in the cafeteria area. We didn't talk to them right away because Kim suggested that we should just walk right past them and act like we don't really care about talking to them right now and sort of build up that authority right away. It didn't really work because after a while we went back to talk to them and they still treated us like trash a little bit. The main leader, his name is Titus, and he's, he's sort of like the head of the union workers. But also, plot twist, Elizabeth, the gardener from outside is actually working for them. She's like their lawyer or something, which is really sad because she was really sweet to us. And now I'm starting to realize that, that she was just sort of scouting us out in the beginning and, and watching us and monitoring us. And she was just putting up this front as this innocent gardener and she's not. <laughs> so that's interesting. And the whole time we were trying to talk to Titus, she was sort of interjecting and kind of guiding him from a legal standpoint of what he should say and what he shouldn't say. He wasn't listening very well because eventually he straight up confessed to killing the guy. <laughs> you know the guy? The hanged man. He confessed and all of his men confessed, but the thing is, things are a bit inconsistent. First of all, we found eight sets of footprints in the crime scene. There were seven union workers in the cafeteria, so one of them is missing. We called it the odd soul, I think. Now, it could be Elizabeth. It could be her because they suggested that, um, they mentioned a she when they were talking about the other, the missing Hardy, Hardy boy, is that what they said? So I was thinking it was Elizabeth, but here's the thing. I was looking through some old footage and I watched the first episode again that I did. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> and I remembered Clage. Is that, I don't know how, the, I don't know if that's how you say her name, but I'm just gonna call her that. Plage was the first person that we met when we left our room in the Whirling and Rags, and I feel like that has to mean something. She also heard everything that went on that night in my room. She claimed that she didn't hear specifics, but from what she was saying, it sounded like she heard a lot. And now we can't get a hold of her. Every time we knock on her door, she's not answering. It just feels really shady. I feel like there's more to her that I'm missing, and I feel like she might be part of that union worker group. I don't know. Maybe she's even leading them. But it's really exciting to think about because it just like kind of occurred to me like, hey, she was the first person that we met when we left our room, and ever since then we haven't been able to talk to her, and it sounds like she's in a room but she's not answering her door. You know, what's going on here with her? She kind of gave us a low like rundown of the situation when we left our room and kind of jogged our memory. I don't know, I could I could be completely off the mark. Maybe she's actually trying to help us. Maybe she's evil. I have no idea. But it's something to think about. The other thing is they basically slandered this guy's name, the one that they killed. They said that he was a rapist and he was sexually assaulting the women in the whirling in rags and he was just a horrible guy all around. But as Kim pointed out, it was very inconsistent. They kind of pointed out minor things that he did before the major things or after them, and it was just all jumbled up and their story just didn't seem right. My guess is maybe someone paid them to do it. I don't know who that could be exactly, if maybe it's Everett Claire, the union 
like leader. I, I forget who he is exactly, but I know that Joyce talked about him in a very negative way and no one really seems to like him except the union workers. Maybe he paid them to do it and now he's telling them to just cover it up and act like they did it, but they did it because he was a bad guy. I don't know. Okay, one last thing. We went through the apartment building and we tried to find the guy who was smoking on the balcony, but it doesn't seem like he's gonna show up again until later at night. So we'll have to wait till then. I don't think there was really anything of note in the apartment buildings. There was quite a bit of money, which was cool. One thing that I'd like to do in this episode is revisit the um, commercial, the Doom commercial area in Playson's shop because last time I tried to shout into the furnace and nothing happened. So I want to retry that check and see if it works. Other than that, I think I might try to talk to Measurehead again don't know if that's gonna go well. Maybe tr I'll try to beat him up, maybe, I don't know. I think I have to like try to beat him up in order to proceed and then I try to go back later and do it again. I don't know. Either way, I don't really want to subscribe to his ideals because it's kind of messed up. So if I can avoid doing that, I'm gonna try. Okay, before we start this episode, I have a very special guest. Come here, Archer. Come here, Archer. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> ah! Arch Do y'all remember the tiny dog that I showed you guys in my Minecraft video? This is her now. She's getting Okay, Arch. She's getting to be massive. She really wants to look at the microphone. Okay, yes, I love you too. Ah. Um, she's massive now and she's so heavy. Ugh. <laughs> and I just want to uh, show you guys <laughs> before I can't lift her up anymore. So yeah, isn't that right? Isn't that right? So yeah, just want to <laughs> just want to show you guys. Back to the video. Okay, before we get started, I got this trophy last time called "Goodest of the Good Cops," and I didn't check to see what it meant. But now I notice it says really get Kim to trust you. So that's why I got that trophy, because Kim really trusts me now. That makes me really, really happy, I gotta say. All right, so in the last episode, we did talk to Joyce a little bit, but we didn't really get any new information out, to be honest. What I'm gonna do is, let's start out by going, well, actually, can we check to see if I can look at this wall one more time? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing okay. To see here. Yeah, no, I can't. I'm not gonna try that out. So I'm gonna go to the doomed commercial area, and we will see. Hi, Annette. I don't think Annette has anything new to say. Let's yeah, let's check it out. We basically started that whole side quest with the entity, and then that really went anywhere because I failed the check. So hello, Plaisance. I should also buy a book sometime. I know you can uh, make the day go a little faster if you read them. Can't tell if I love my bangs or if I hate them, but it's fine. I wonder if we can try this again, actually. <laughs> we'll just keep the hurting myself. waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its okay. master. <laughs> yeah, no. My, uh, my physical strength is not, not the best. Oh, but I have 595 out of a hundred, so I'll be able to upgrade this. I really need to do that. Oh, oh, another thing I need to look at is the, uh, thought cabinet, because I haven't done this at all, and it's actually really important, apparently. So basically, from what I've heard, you can sort of put these into little slots here, and then they... I already finished this one, so I get I get bonuses every time I, I finish the thought, basically, is, is what I'm getting at. Let me see here. So from what I can tell, it's giving me like a negative bonus. It, it's sort of like taking things away right now, maybe until I finish it. That's why. I, I guess I'll put some of these on here. See yourself, you pass above. Okay, that takes off authority. This one takes out logic. So that's why I didn't really look at it too much because it was, it's kind of like giving me negative bonuses and I didn't know if I really wanted that. Okay, not unlock a new slot to research the thoughts. 
So let's just put all of these on there and see what happens, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Alright, so... Oh. Hi. It's dark. The lieutenant states it's obvious. And the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Okay, I forgot to equip it, thank you. Fair point, yes, totally obvious. Flashlights go in hand? <laughs> Stare at your hand uncomprehendingly. <laughs> Got it, Kim, no need to rub it in. Fair point, yes, totally obvious. Right, now let's get to it. Okay, I guess I'll do that then. Where? Where's my flashlight? Bro. Where's my flashlight? What the heck? What did I do with my flashlight? Is it in his car? I don't get it. Did I put it back in Kim's car somehow? Did I sell it? No, I don't think you can sell it, right? Okay, you know what? It's fine. I don't need my flashlight right now. Wait, am I not allowed to unless I have my flashlight? Son of a bitch. Okay. Oh wait, it, there it is. What the fuck? <laughs> Did, was that there the whole time and I didn't see it? <laughs> Am I losing my mind? Alright, yeah, you know what? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> we haven't been down here in a while. Well, I guess to them, it, they, they were just here yesterday, but to me, it's been a while. Well, let's look in this thing again. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Let's try it again. Another what? pathetic yelp sounds off into the vast darkness of the chimney. You're a little embarrassed you produced it. Shit. <laughs> well, that sucks. Kick it. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Okay. Your toe hurts. <laughs> Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Okay. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected oh. to the chimney. Okay. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent Wait, fire. Wait, what? Only dead rats. Oh, what just happened? Oh, I kicked the furnace, so now I get a bonus. Okay, try it again. Something yes! breaks loose in you. Finally. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Okay. Hello? You hear a woman's voice answer. You've awakened the entity. Shit! This is the police! Who's there? I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello? Are you there? Speak to me. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come up there. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear Yay! <laughs> upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Oh, man. After you, officer. Well, shit. Nice. Let's go. I guess kicking it helps. <laughs> totally worth it. Hello? Whoa. Whoa, what? What is this? Hi. Hold on. Let me take off my flashlight. Oh, wait, shit. I leveled up. Okay. Let's upgrade physical strength. And let's get rid of my flashlight so I'm not shining it in her face. Hi. Oh. Hello. I'm Nia. Hi. Novelty dice maker. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. She looks like the girl with the pearl earring. That painting. She's cute. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Melius. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of dye are you looking for? Uh... <laughs> this is surprisingly peaceful. Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. Okay. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on, what do you mean, Milius? You must have confused me with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Why are you asking me about dice? Move on. Uh, hold on. What do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Milius is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. 
She pats on the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. <laughs> but some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. She sounds like she's in a... In like a, an echo chamber. You must have confused me with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? She is so sweet. Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Yes. <laughs> As she speaks, her bone like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Role playing games? You know the one made by Fortress hmm. Accident. Does that count? Right. Sure, I like role-playing games and I need some dice. Maybe. I'm not really sure why I'm here, honestly. No, I was looking for something else. Squint your eyes mysteriously. Answers. I'm not interested in buying dice right now. I'm a police officer and I need to ask some questions. Let's, let's go with it. I, I like role-playing games. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set, unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. How did you become a dice maker? Okay, I'd like to order a die from you. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Hey, where are we anyway? What is this place? Look around the room. We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. <laughs> it's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Can she be my best friend? I love her so much. Placence was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. But I don't want to tell Poissons because then she's going to want to kick her out. I'll have to lie about it. Create here. The lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into the shadows above. Very creative. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. <laughs> some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. Very true. She's thankful for the security they provide her. I love this. It's so cute. Um, I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the Doom commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. She nods as the wind howls in from the furnace shaft above. Wait, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? Placence is the one who sent me. She's convinced that this place is swarming with malicious energies. Placence, the bookshop lady? I've Oops. heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? <laughs> Sorry for moving that so much. Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. The curse is just binding its time before it strikes again. Sooner or later, everyone will fail, even her. I don't know why the bookstore hasn't gone bankrupt yet. That's why I'm here to investigate. But tell her the truth. All right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Really? <gasps> what about that blue door in the kitchen? I wonder if that leads down to where she is. But that wouldn't make any sense, would it? I don't know. Hold on, the whirling in rags is part of the Doom commercial area? Yes, but it's a, still a separate building. The malicious energies can't reach there. Well, yeah, well, that would make sense. It's part of the commercial area because it's part of the whole 
you know. No, the whirling and rag, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off, and the customers have trouble paying bills. Uh, hold on, the whirling part of the Doom commercial area. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Central project. Uh, it's not doing well either. And then there is me. She sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered, from knives to carving piles and to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million rail business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? This girl can do no wrong. I love her. <laughs> Playsounds thinks it's because you are the source of it, a malignant... <laughs> okay. A malignant... Malignant? How do you say that word again? Malignant entity. It's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't affect people like you. So sweet. The curse will get to you. Have no doubt about it. It's just... It just doesn't care about earthly time frames. I'll be the first to admit there are many inconsistencies in the so-called curse. It's because you're competent. <laughs> what, so the curse only affects people with poor work ethics? What you're describing isn't a curse. It's capitalism. <laughs> Good point. The time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I think it still might be you that's causing this near your eyes very mysteriously. I'm starting to think... I'm starting to see that there's no curse, only business decisions and a natural market fluctuation. Honestly, I'm still not sure. This world is a puzzling place. I don't think there is a curse. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. She pinches the root of her nose. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Why hasn't her business failed? Hmm... Well, I definitely can't try that right now. Do you know what else happened to other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Oh, wow. Are you interested in anyone specific? Uh, there used to be a hair salon here, right? What happened to the gym? What's up with the broken windows? Did someone make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. Okay, let's just go through all of them, I guess. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. Hmm. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. Yeah, see? It's not about the haircut. It's about the confidence. Good point. I don't know if anyone knows this, but I used to have really, really short hair. Really short hair. It was like kind of right up against my neck and longer on the top. But, um, I used to be called a boy, stuff like that. I won't get into it. Um, yeah, I, I kind of get picked on a lot for it. So I can relate to this a little bit. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemitip's boxing club. Artemitip. A community project created to steer at-risk youth away from drugs and crime. That's cool. Seems like these were really cool buildings that just went away, sadly. And who was Artemip? A kind man from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. Maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? He's sort of the king around here. <laughs> He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Indeed, who is Kuno? Your guess is as good as mine. He's a little ginger gremlin. <laughs> oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth. Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window. It's oddly quiet there at the moment. Uh-oh. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. Good point. I agree. How did that community project work out? Judging from the kids I've met so far, it didn't really work, did it? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. 
At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Great. You should have known it. <laughs> Eventually, uh -oh. the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. I'm guessing I can check out the punching bag downstairs now, which I'm not going to do. Well, I'm going to check it out, but I'm not going to take the drugs. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? Wow. And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool. Very cool about the debris, but what's a snuff milieu? <laughs> milieu? Is that what she said? It's a shame about those windows. I'm not even going to ask about that because I don't want it. Yeah, don't. She looks down then up again. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Great. <laughs> but what drugs exactly? I need to know what drugs he was doing for my police report. Let it pass. Anything else? Just this electrochemistry needs to leave me alone. I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? What in the name of... I didn't know insects had any rights or activists. <laughs> yeah, the Attila didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad someone took care of the little guys. I like insects, not... But insects don't have any brains or feelings. They got what they deserve. Making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea. It is a pretty bad idea, to be honest. You know what? I'm gonna be nice. <laughs> glad someone took care of the little guys. Hmm. Really? Anyway. <laughs> she looks at the windowsill where a dead fly is lying on its back, legs curled up in a bow tie. <laughs> Poor guy. Suddenly, you get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. It's hard to say why. Hmm, kind of unsettling. What's with the rotor blade and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Mm. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashtkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? That's illegal running off the company's money like that. Why hasn't he been arrested? Uh, interesting. What? The usual, say? I imagine that he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. The lieutenant is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Hmm. I wonder if Kim knew someone like that. That's why he's pissed. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. Hmm. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. 
What do you mean, liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Damn. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear the chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Really, they must have been a gigantic ego trip. It did look impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses, and so on. Uh, In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. And to show up to work on time. Hmm. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult. Especially if you've been drinking. Thank you, I didn't ask. <laughs> well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. That's too bad, I would have supported them. The project looked great. You're right, they should have just tried harder. They had everything they needed to succeed. That's too bad. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. Hmm. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic desk. The result is one on a 20-sided die. Wow. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? I'm almost done. There's a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled river show I see T. You're in for a treat here. <laughs> she smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. <laughs> kind of scared to ask? Indeed. What were the other ideas? I don't care about the other ideas. I just want to hear about the bear. Did the bear work? <laughs> it's so mean. Alright, what about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. <laughs> and by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dare to disturb their bored magazine browsing. My god, it's the girl from the frit shop. She leans back, disapproving. Wow. So did they start up the frit shop? Frit does the same thing. I know a girl like that. She works in the frit as a cafeteria, and she's not particularly friendly. What'd they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. I'm surprised they showed up to work at all. <laughs> yeah. That's an award-winning idea. How else do you choose people around you? What'd they expect? <laughs> oh, but they did. They did show up to work, and not alone. There were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering <laughs> near the ice cream stand. Wow. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. <laughs> she repeats, pressing thumbs into her temple, like she's trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either. And half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. <laughs> Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. Well, nod solemnly. It's the market doing its job. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. <laughs> the bear was scary. Every time I saw that bear, I felt scared, like it could become alive in any moment, though. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Maybe. Because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't. Doing his best, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. <laughs> uh, what's a vision beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. So my electrochemistry. A wise and noble beast, guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. 
Why? The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. I don't do drugs. I do drugs. I've got a vision beast myself. I don't have a comment on drugs. Grab your necktie and mumble, not now, you beast. <laughs> I don't do drugs. Very good. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. <laughs> she seems almost sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the morning light. Her eyes follow it idly. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? Okay, I know we've been I've talking been here to for her a long time. for a long time now, but I still need to ask her about the body. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. She rubs her forehead. Her scarf left a faint line on her dusty skin. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must oh. belong to her then. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? I was wondering about the whirling in rags. Is it part of the same building complex? So I name East Delta Pinball on the doorbell. Uh, a strange thing happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. She looks like she doesn't really believe you. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Playsons from the bookstore. First, it wasn't Playsons. I know her and I would have recognized her voice. She said she was from Tricennial Electrics. Tricentennial, Tricentennial Electrics? There was a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. It was eerie. Whatever happened, keep your cool. It's probably better to admit that it was a harmless prank. You're right. I probably just got made fun of. No, it was something else. Something eerie narrow your eyes it may have been some sort of rare electrical anomaly i'm not saying to keep my cool but i think it was something else pranks can be eerie she looks as if she's still convinced it's nothing to be worried about oh the kids these days we were just one of them and now they're terrorizing us no solidarity if you say so also i'm gonna heal myself because I just realized I, I need to. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I was wondering about the rolling in rags. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. I saw a name East Delta pinball on the doorbell. Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure, before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, choreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Mm. Pinball is the worst. <laughs> Why do you say that? Lieutenant chips in. His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. Wow, okay. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. Actually, I have more... I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Um, do you know about the man who was lynched behind the rolling in racks? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Hmm. You sure? The lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by a daily ruckus? Kuno. <laughs> and you never took your eyes off the work to look out of the window? Do you often work Sunday nights? Uh, what do you mean by daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. 
During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. Hmm. Informing someone in a murder investigation? So she doesn't really care. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off of the work to look out of your window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your question. Yes, this. She <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Anything else, officer? Uh, no, that's it for now. We talked to her quite long enough. Okay, it's auto saving. Oh, she put her headphones back on. Oh, the candy dispenser has been re repurposed to contain thousands of dice. This tray is full of dice, colorful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. Anything else over here? Okay, so she was adorable. Oh wait, flashlight. She was adorable, but she didn't really tell me anything of interest. I mean, it was nice talking to her, don't get me wrong. Let's get out of here and go do something else. I'm guessing I can look at the, I can't look at the punching bag. That's surprising. I'm gonna go and uh, try to beat up Measurehead. <laughs> okay, now that we're out of here. So, I, I just want to check my, my stats again real quick. I'm Super Star, Super Star Cop 2, Apocalypse Cap, Cop 0, Sorry Cop 8, Boring Cop 1. Great. <laughs> Communist 2, Fascist 1, Ultra, ultra Liberal 1, Moralist 3. Good cop slash bad cop, 10. Guessing that's good. Honor, 3. Great. At least I'm not a bad cop. Let's tell Plaisance some things. I don't think I'm going to tell her everything because I don't want her to kick out the girl. What have you found? And also, do buy the books. There may be oh. teachings in them. Okay, I can't- I can't say anything else. I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Nia. Is that- is that how she said her name? And she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. No ma'am, I have felt her aura. She is not the one to blame for this curse. She may be involved, but I don't have a way to question the mal malignant entity further. No, ma'am, I have felt her aura. She is not the one to blame. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? Uh. <laughs> She's squeezing on the pendant too tight. A drop of blood in her palm. Jeez. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. Oh God, she says there's no curse because there are too many inconsistencies. This is a lie. The source is, a, is in the taxidermist shop. He became involved in arts darker than taxidermy and brought the void spirits down upon this place. Honestly, I don't have an answer yet. There are still leads to be followed, like that strange radio computer thing. There is another entity, more malignant, pulling strings, strings in Martinez. Probably... Perhaps in my travels, I will cross paths with it. Uh, she says there's no curse. Hmm. Too many inconsistencies. What kind of talk is that? The woman scoffs at you with an audible snort. Good luck persuading her. Some people can rationalize anything. First, you're one of those inconsistencies. As I said, she's a novelty dice maker. Her business has been up and running for a long time now. You're one of the inconsistencies. I'm not doing as well as it looks like I am. 
I only have my Simonese wards to thank for the protection they provide. As I said, she's a novelty dice maker. Yes, because her business consists of the psychic leech that's been feeding the curse. Red blotches appear on her skin. I see that you've fallen for her manipulation, detective. The investigation is over. I just hope that you haven't made anything worse by going in there. Thank you for nothing. <laughs> Please do buy some books or be on your way. Wow. Total psychic collapse between you two right now. There was never any right. other way this could have gone. She's just too far gone into her yeah. own mind. Thank you, Rhetoric. I am sorry we had to disappoint you, ma'am. Can we go now? <laughs> he turns to you. Okay, okay. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. The cool thing is, that gave me a lot of experience. Let's go. <laughs> okay, well at least we finished that whole side quest. I get she was disappointed in everything, but there's really nothing else I could have done. Just go out to Measurehead and try to punch him in the face and fail, obviously, and then maybe ask around for help. <laughs> it's a racist dude, great. He's still just standing there. Also, this guy, for sure, has a different voice actor now. I don't know why they changed it. He was this very, very, he had a very strong Scottish accent, and now he doesn't. That's how we talked to him. Hermit, I don't know what that says. Sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. All right. Hi, ladies. <laughs> Hi, lady. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. Forgot how slow this guy speaks, <laughs> but you're all part of the union. The Hardy Manlets are on manlets. the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonies. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Oh god, knock him out. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh. Oh, is Kim reaching for his gun? How did this happen? Your little fist Ugh. is in his giant hand, uh -oh. and he's squeezing it. It hurts. Oh god. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. I am a de degenerate alcoholic. F fuck you. I'm a cop. I'm a cop. <laughs> your fist cracks in his hand like uh. a ripe apple. Pain shoots up into your brain as he's twisting it more and more. The words to the song have changed. Say, I am a violent drunk. Heal, heal yourself. Okay. No, I won't fucking say anything. Your hand twists in his grip and the pain blinds you. Still, you press the words out of your oh God, I now. need to say it, because I'm gonna die. Good. Oh. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. Okay, leave. Oh, Kim wants to talk to me. Look, I'm embarrassed, okay? I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians. Because that won't get us anywhere. Listen, I don't have a choice. I'm not even sure the one bullet my chamber holds would even prick that hurt. But he's the one trying to provoke me. Okay, I was trying to assert my dominance over him. But I was fighting bad, unsavory ide ideologies. I'm a hero. How else are we going to get through that gate? I can't promise that I might attack him again. How else are we going to get through that gate? There must be some other way. Let's go see the yard again. It faces the other end of the harbor. We're done with Measurehead here. 
But he's the one trying to provoke me. And you're just going to let him manipulate you like that? He raises an eyebrow. Why does he have to have a point? But I was fighting bad on savory ideologies. I'm a hero. We are not here on some political quest. We are here to solve a crime. Don't make the situation any more volatile than it already is. I can't promise that. I might attack him again. The lieutenant groans, <laughs> but doesn't say anything. That's right. You should do it again. It's the last thing you'll be expecting. What's this? <laughs> We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. <laughs> you must be mistaken. I'm a real radical. That's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. This is because I keep saying none of the above to politi political stuff, isn't it? It's also about that. But it's also more. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. First, where is this Kingdom of Conscience? No more talk. Sign me up for a passport. Opt in. No, I'm too fiery for this watercolor ideology. I'm trying to develop more extreme and interesting opinions. Where is this Kingdom of Conscience? It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. How do you bring about those circumstances? Incrementally. Yawn. You'd get there faster with a little speed. <laughs> okay. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place. Too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually. Increment by increment. But what about all the things that are wrong now? Okay, what is the Kingdom of Conscience actually like? The Kingdom is difficult to comprehend, and even more difficult to describe. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The Kingdom of Conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. <laughs> Sounds incredible. L and Z, let's go there right now. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things <laughs> slow? Oh, right. Then let's get there eventually? That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Rivershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. Agreed. Now let's go. Put that into my head. Oh, so they're like in progress right now. That's kind of cool. Okay. Heartache is powerful, but democracy is subtle. Incrementally, you begin to notice a change in the weather. When it snows, the flakes are softer when they stick to your worry-worn forehead. When it rains, the rain is warmer. Democracy is coming to the administrative region. The ideals of DeLorean humanism are reinstating themselves. How can they not? These are the ideas of coalition and the moralist international. Those guys are signal blue, and they're not only good, they're also powerful. What will it be like once their nuanced plans have been realized? Who knows? Let's uh, take one of these out then. Good morning. Okay, let's take out that, and let's replace it with the Kingdom of Conscious. Nice. And I also told Kim that I can't promise anything, because I really can't. Like, I know probably another way to get past him to get into the harbor, like, unnoticed might be, like, freaking going through Kuno's hideout there. But I kind of failed that. Okay, wait. Yeah, I can't... Can't retry that one yet. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's see here. Hi, Kuno. Is there anything new I can do with you? Hi. Book does Kuno care? 
Oh, God. Kuno, I found your shack. Point to the shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the <laughs> fuck did you get in? I pushed the panels aside, Kuno. I phase shifted through the roofing material. Before we go on with all that, let's talk about how you said it was just some roofing material, some gimps left behind. That was a lie. Uh, I phase shifted through the roofing material. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. He trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. He says to himself, then turns to you. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? What's with the pig head? <laughs> oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. This kid is going to grow up to be a serial killer. Were you trying to send me some sort of a, a message of some sort? Demo tape? Like some kind of musical? Cool pig head. I liked it. I got one too. This one. Points to your head. It's shit. Forget it. I'm not saying those things. Maybe I should try to play along. Cool pig head. <laughs> what? <laughs> eh. What is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Wow. I just... Okay. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Well played. No one saw that coming. Okay. Well, maybe it's a, it's good to throw him off balance, you know? I found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? Is it the tube of... Magnolosam? Kuno? Is that my coat up there? I'm pretty sure it's mine. Point to your coat waving in the wind. Could I get to the harbor from the roof? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly pig. I tried that. It didn't go so well. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear Kuno style. That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. Okay. Found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. Nope. Uh, what's with the tube of that? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? <laughs> he looks at you like you just pointed at the sun and asked what it was. You could use some. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno! I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. He looks at you eyes bulging. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Is that my coat up there? Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you've still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not snitching. Uh, what did I do? He's saying you climbed up there. Yeah. He probably saw you do it. I've heard enough of this. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Well, let's try this one more time. You were too pushy oh. last time. Think this through. Try to really understand. The okay. psychological bond Kuno has with Kuno S. So Kuno S is 100% the one in control. She is like kind of controlling everything that Kuno says. She's very, very protected, protective of him and he cares about her, it seems like. So if I start trash talking her, he's going to get upset. <sighs> but I've tr I don't know. What's the deal with Kuno S? Just look. While Kuno has no problem being near you, she always hides behind the fence, afraid for her life. 
Yeah. Like she's done something. Something very bad. Like, for example, buying my gun. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you. Even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. Okay, you must interesting how. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Okay. Also, all in all. Act on it. Kuno. Kuno. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you yeah. whispering about. She puts extra stress onto that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. He turns back to you and hunkers down. This is it. Okay. You've got it. But be careful. You can still okay. fuck this up. I did the other two. Don't make so... look bad in this. What's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Huh? Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yes, she does. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you! Kuno talks to whoever he wants! Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. He hunches down again. You did it. Okay. They're separated. Yes. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. What do you mean she smokes someone? You think she has anything to do with the dead man? You said she's insane? What's that language she uses? Napa Kumpi? Is she your sister? What do you mean she smokes someone? Kuno means she killed yeah. someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. He stares at you intently. Really? Isn't she too small to overpower someone? You serious about this killing business? What if she has, Kuno? That would explain things. You serious about this killing business? Killing is serious shit. Kuno's always serious about the 488. She's probably killed well, a pig, too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Okay, how many cops has she killed, then? Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just <laughs> running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. The creature peers at you Come both on. from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. He's not going to tell us everything while she's still there. This is interesting. I finally got Kuno to freaking talk to me. You think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's going to put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. <laughs> my liege. You said she's insane? Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kitty psycho, cat burn and shit. She does the real deal. Whoa, what's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. Some bad drugs. <laughs> and he doesn't even want to think about it. This isn't just another boast. This is really surprising. What's that language she uses? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. What people? Crazy people? The fucking Nakis? I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nakis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. I have no idea. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. He points at the apartment building behind the fence. What was that? The little one twists her neck, looking at the building. She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. That hallway there with the janitor's closet? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Why was she dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. 
Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuna went out. You said she got in? How? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home, and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. That's kind of sad. It's obvious that she's had a messed up life. And Kuno probably has too. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Uh, he's trying to understand where he gets his, uh, his anger from, I think. How are you dealing with all of this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. <laughs> he spits through the gap in his front teeth. She needs professional help. You can't do this alone. You need backup. I'm here for you. Listen. Listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? The boy looks at you in the eye. Black people is trying to focus. Understood, Kuno. I can respect that. Who are you kidding, kid? You can't take down a man several times your size. You'll end up dead yourself. I can respect that. All right. Now we can do business. Business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... He starts no longer whispering. Don't hook him up with shit, Kuno! See? Relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all <laughs> kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if nope. you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Hey, <laughs> cooker. <laughs> That's right. Kuno is a candy store for pigs now. Get ready to be rewarded. Oh god. He concludes spreading his hands like a baker presenting a selection of freshly baked pastries. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. All right. So, that was cool, because we were able to get through to him a little bit. Let's go back in his shack. Kuna says she killed someone, which is very concerning. I don't know how much of it is him telling the truth, but I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt here. I think she's definitely capable of it, especially because she, um... She acts super guilty, and she quite possibly has my gun. So, I'm just wondering who she killed. Okay, should I try my coat again? A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. Let's upgrade. This, so I can have a better chance. And also, is anything giving me less of a chance? Let's switch my pants, take off my shoes. Okay, let's try this. Come on. A tarpaulin cloak is still oh. caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for the <laughs> why is it? Why is Kuno speaking? Let's try it. I did it! <gasps> Whoa! As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. What? Close your eyes, let your senses take in the world around you. Continue the voyage through the salty air. Damn! As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, capable, must be the adrenaline. I know you could do it. <laughs> My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. Yay! <laughs> With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes, we made it. 
And I got a cool jacket now. Yes. Okay. Police cloak made from heavy tarpaul tarpaulin? <laughs> it would be nigh wind and waterproof if it weren't three bullet holes scattered on the surface. The signature white rectangle of the RCM covers the garment's back. Whoa, that's cool. I like it. Damn, I look badass. <laughs> okay. Should I keep these glasses on? It's pretty cool. I like it. I like I like the fit. Very nice. So we didn't have to beat that guy up. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna auto save real quick. All I had to do was believe in myself. What's that? Collecting rainwater. Damn. Whoa. There's a lot of stuff over here. Wait, hold on. Uh, uh. All around you, great machines in quiescence? <laughs> quiescence? <laughs> quiescence? Oh god. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and potent Pilsner. Hold up. Y'all know what I gotta do. This is like a billion bucks here. <laughs> okay, crazy, go stupid. <laughs> Okay, is that it? There we go. Okay, cool. Feels a bit unsettling to be here. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Oh, that's a guy we you met. You need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. This is where Rene works. I'm going to look around, search the booth. Have a seat, rest. Let's rest a minute. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Breathe deep. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your wow. lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. Uh, let's get up. Can you I stand like, sleep there? And exit the booth. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna search the booth. If you must, but please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Yeah. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take it. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Rene looks like he's about to smile. Hmm. This photo must be tied to some good memories. Why did you take that picture of Rene? Can I, can I put it back? I'm gonna ask him about it. I'm a cop, it's ins instinctual to collect evidence. I'm making an artistic photo collage, Kim. I'm gonna ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. <laughs> Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. All right. Can we look at it? Aw. Black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a Ferris wheel. The girl is young and pretty. The man clad in fancy uniform and smiling. On the back, a very steady hand has written the words, Revishol Ferris, summer of 91. Cute. Very cute. I feel kind of bad for taking it. Oh. Snow is quietly covering the numerous wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Wait, how hard? Well, they went through six bottles of potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Did I do this? Well, yes, I think we can say with relative <laughs> confidence that it was you. Oh god. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Looks like I had a lot of fun. I'm still not completely convinced it was me. It must have been on an advanced scouting mission in the harbor. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Yes. This scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. He turns to leave. Alright. Let's go down here. Dang, this is crazy. New area. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. It looks like a forest under snow. So we shouldn't get caught here, right? <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. Oh wait, no. Hold on. 
Whoa. A rusting control panel with several knobs. <laughs> Two buttons uh. marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Elume on Etendre off. Okay. Let's leave that for now. I'm kind of scared to move it. Whoa. It's crazy though. Wait, is there someone down there? Yeah, there is. Oh, that's them. Shit. Okay, yeah, we shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't draw attention to ourselves right now. I don't want to get kicked off. Cool. Take that. You see a faded industrial lettering on the platform. Svalsund. Svalsund? I don't know how to say that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, not Kim. Stop. <laughs> Svalsund means whale fjord in Arden. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. Whoa. Where are we? Shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. We need to zoom out, yeah. Oh. Speaker tower is silent. There's no work organized to there's no work to organize in the yard below. Yeah, they're all on strike. I wonder if we can open the door for those people down there. The musk of oil and rust become comes from the chasm in front of you. Smells like blood. Uh. Oh. I know what I need. Fan ultra, fallen ultra, gloves. What is that? Ooh. For ultimate performance, efficiency with these fallen ultra series gloves become fingerless. And with a grippy padding covering the palms, making these ideal for quadruple quad, quadrupedal movement or for lifting cargo. Okay, cool. Epic. Look at my fit. I'm looking snazzy. Industrial sized service. Smells like burnt coffee. Did I put my shoes back on? Okay, I did. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Hi. Should I even talk to you? Container, container, container. Hello. Container, container, I'll <laughs> turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from Ubi. the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Muindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. The tiny man is so engaged in his work, he doesn't notice you. Hi! Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. <laughs> huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? He smiles. What a, what a nice man. <laughs> Shit. Oops. Punched my mic. Okay. The Hi. look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. <laughs> I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? Shadow passes over his kind face. What is it with you people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. Doesn't seem to wait, be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. You're Ubi, right? What are you doing with the containers? Where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Well, I know why. <laughs> Do you work here? Um... You're Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty <laughs> rumors. Good to know. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. <laughs> what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Okay. 
What's going on here? Look at the mountains of containers rising behind him. What's the logic? Sure, mister. About what? Hold on. Bye bye. Let me see if I can up my logic for a second. So I have a better chance. Alright, let's Oh hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes I did, yes I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. <laughs> this guy's adorable. Leo, Leo, in the future can we keep this greeting shorter? <laughs> I had some questions for you. If that's not too much trouble? No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Evrar is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. What trouble did Titus and his friends get into? Well, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. Mm. I heard Mr. Everard telling them to take some time off. Really? Did they kill someone? No, I don't think they killed anyone. Let's better talk about something else. Titus and his boys do good work. I don't want to get them in trouble over a little drinking. All right. He probably doesn't know anything anyway. Who in their right mind would tell him? <laughs> do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. Little man raises his hand in welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everett's right hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> he chuckles. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Good her to chuckle again. Who is this, Miss Beaufort? Lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewey Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. <laughs> I love this guy so much. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Hold on, who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? I think you're doing a pretty great job around here, Leo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this place would totally fall apart if you didn't shine the boss man's shoes, Leo. That's so mean. Who's this Miss... Who is this Miss Beaufort? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. Oh. Lizzie! Elizabeth, duh! He respects that word. That's obvious. It's a real sharp tool. So she's his right hand man. Four years she was gone, then she came back. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real <laughs> pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Aww. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. He sighs and falls silent, watching you meekly with his blue, blue eyes. <laughs> Could she be talking about the union fixer? A.K.A. the gardener. Yep. So, who is this union fixer? The gardener? Looks like it. I'm not sure what a fixer is, but she is a real nice girl. Smart as a whip, too. The little guy smiles a disarming smile at you. Telling the gardener you know her name might throw her off. Perhaps something to consider later. I like it, I like it. What's in those containers over there? I point at the containers suspended from a crane arm. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. 
I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs and continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where, where I can find this man. Oh, Mr. Ever is where he always is. In his office, of course. He points to two joint containers on your right. Oh, oh shit, I'm just I making can do some that. covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Okay, I'm not going to try the red check just because... Sure, mister. About what? I have a high chance, but it's not high enough for my liking. So I'll come back to him later. Banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Uh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. I just healed my morale. Okay, great. Okay. What's in here? Oh, shit. Is this what he was talking about? Is this where he works? No. Is it? I don't know if I really want to talk to Everard right now. I'm not sure if I should save that. Whoa. What's going on here? What's this? Coffee in the giant thermoses is still lukewarm. Okay, I'm guessing... Oh shit. There's a big man! Oh god, Kim's going crazy! Okay. Okay, you know what? Not, not this episode. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna leave this episode off here because I'm scared of getting into something um, that's gonna take me a while to finish because this episode has already been kind of long and I feel like I should just wrap it up now. Obviously, we did a lot. We talked to the girl in uh, the Doom commercial area for a long time and that took up a lot of the episode. I'm sorry about that. Um, but she was very interesting to talk to. Her voice was very relaxing, so I really liked her. We also talked to Kuno and finally got through to him and talked about Kuno S and how she has apparently killed someone, killed a police officer to be more specific. And Kuno seems to be kind of afraid of her, but he's also very, very protective of her. And if we do anything to hurt her, He's not going to be very happy. So I'm not planning on doing anything to her just yet until maybe we get enough information out of Kuno, but we will see. We also tried to beat up Measurehead. That didn't go very well, um, to be expected. I'm hoping if I were to beat him up, maybe that would gain some sort of respect from him because we were able to beat him. So maybe he'd end up respecting us more and we could actually talk to him about some of the situations. I don't know. Either way, we have a lot to do this next episode. I'm very, very excited to continue this game. Um, but until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are about this game. I'm having a great time, obviously. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like or subscribe if you're new because I'd really love to have you stick around and watch me play more Disco Elysium and wait to see what happens next. I'm very excited to speak to Everett Claire. I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.